And there are a couple of things that, nearly midway through 2022, I hope that you and I can agree on. First, anthropogenic climate change is real, and if we continue to burn fossil fuels at the rate we have been, we are all fudged. Ergo, as Elon Musk and countless environmental experts have told us time and time and time again, and continue to tell us today, we need to accelerate our transition away from fossil fuels and onto cleaner, greener forms of energy and transportation. Electric cars are, right now, our best way to do that when it comes to land-based personal transportation. Although we also need to spend far more money on decent, affordable mass transit. But that's for another video. The second point that I hope we can all agree on is the sad truth that right now, as we look towards 2023 and beyond, there is a terrible shortage of automotive components caused by the chip shortage, which itself was caused by COVID-19. And moreover, a chronic shortage of lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles. And you cannot build electric cars without high quality EV batteries. Which is why, earlier this week, the Biden administration announced a $3.16 billion investment into the electric vehicle industry in the US. Specifically, a $3.16 billion investment into creating a sustainable, reliable supply of raw and refined materials that are needed to dramatically expand the number of electric vehicles being produced in the US every year. And today, we're going to talk about that detailing what the investment includes, why it's so important, and most importantly, why we can't just leave it to the industry to fix. But first, if you like all the things we said running through your head and you feel that this is not enough, then it's time to hit subscribe, ring our bell, and tell your friends, family, and co-workers about this channel. Every share helps us grow, and if you'd like to support the channel financially, just stick around until the end, and I'll tell you how. Back to our video. But before we get too heavily into the details of this pretty sizable investment in the EV battery manufacturing industry in the US, it is also important to note that the Biden administration, while still working towards a goal of lowering emissions and increasing electric vehicle mass adoption, also announced its intent to strengthen and replenish its strategic petroleum reserve. Essentially, a massive cache of oil that it keeps on hand to ensure that things can continue to function as they currently do in case anything bad was to happen. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can a government that is still buying oil reserves and continues to allow drilling permits to be issued also paint itself as a government working to electrify its nation? The answer is complicated, and I'm not a political one, so I'm not going to try and answer it. I know. Easy way out. But I am certainly frustrated that oil and gas permits are still being issued and that oil reserves are being purchased when that money could be ploughed into EV programmes. But the harsh reality is that we're not there yet. The US produces more oil and gas than it actually uses, but our entire society is so reliant on the fossil fuel industry that any change will inevitably take time. I don't like it, but that's kind of where we are. And in a world where there's a looming spectre of another Cold War, I can also understand it in some way, even though it really sucks. But what I can tell you, however, is that shortly after announcing its investment in establishing a robust domestic EV battery supply chain and attempting to rebuild its strategic petroleum reserves, the administration also announced another investment, this time $2.3 billion, to fund carbon capture projects and develop carbon management programs designed to reduce the amount of carbon being released into the air. Think the equivalent of what Elon Musk's XPRIZE is trying to do. And while I know that many of you will say that, well, that's what the X Prize is for, again, it's all about all hands on deck to solve a problem. So I cannot critique either approaches here if they end up bringing us usable results. Anyway, to the EV battery supply funding. 
or Biden's battery billions, as I will call them. Announced by U.S. Secretary of Energy Greinholm during a visit to Michigan and the opening of a new nuclear research facility, the program is being made possible by the one trillion U.S. dollar funding package that was made possible by the bipartisan infrastructure bill that was signed into law late last year. That law, which also includes nearly $5 billion set aside for EV charging network rollouts across the US, something which was also unveiled this week, focuses on everything from expanding public rail services and rebuilding bridges to electrifying school buses and tackling domestic energy security. Of course, right now, the majority of raw materials used in US electric car battery packs aren't coming from the US, they're coming from overseas. And in a world of heightened tensions between nations and maybe less of the global partnerships of old, every country is tightening its belt and trying to secure as much of its own resources in country as possible. In the case of the US, whose relationship with China hasn't been all that good over the last decade, it also means relying less on China, which currently dominates the majority of the global battery supply chain. And when one country controls the spice, I mean, the raw materials and the finished cells, it's not so good for fair pricing for global markets. Right now, none of the funds have been allocated, but it's the expressed intent of the Department of Energy to make funds available to institutions and businesses who are working to improve the US domestic battery industry. That includes everything from new mining and refining techniques for the raw materials used in EV batteries to new battery manufacturing facilities, recycling programs and research to make better, longer lasting, more energy dense batteries that require less exotic materials and whose list of materials can more easily be obtained in the US. So why can't we just let businesses do all of this on their own? I mean, after all, Tesla has been pretty darned epic in its battery research and development efforts. Even its former CTO, J.B. Straubel, set up his own battery recycling company immediately after leaving Tesla, and it's already getting massive contracts from the EV industry and the auto industry, including Volkswagen and Ford, in fact, to recycle used lithium-ion batteries, recovering an impressive amount of raw materials for reuse in new battery cell production. Well, the answer to that is that you could, but there's a bigger problem right now battery cell production is still very small on the grand order of things. Tesla is on track to globally produce 1 million cars or more this year, which is phenomenal. But Tesla's production globally is nowhere near the 15 to 17 million cars and light duty trucks produced every year in the US alone. So if we really truly want the world's fleet to become electric by 2040, and I mean, if we need the world's fleet to become electric, we need a whole lot more battery production and EV production to take place. And when I say we need, we really do. Because while you and I might be accompanying Bill Dore to a resting place six feet under or being sprinkled over our favorite mountain range by that point, the land we leave behind for our children, it won't be nice. Sure, the Earth will survive, it always does, but without a significant concerted effort, we are a species dancing towards a pretty surefire date with a human-caused mass extinction event, and a date with the Grim Reaper. Mort might have a job because of it, but... yeah. Simply put, the enormity of getting the world transitioned to EVs and more locally the US is more than just one company can handle. And until the economies of scale exist that make EV battery packs as common and as affordable as gasoline engines, we're gonna need some help. Even if Tesla has been doing a bloody good job thus far. Except, well, here's the last thing to bear in mind. Tesla is where it is today because it took advantage of a US governmental program designed to help automakers bring electric cars and low emission vehicles to market. Tesla took out a loan under the US Department of Energy's Advanced Vehicle Technology Manufacturing Loan Program, or AVTM for short. It earmarked far more money than is currently on the table for EV batteries to help automakers transition away from fossil fuels. Nissan took out a loan under the program Ford, which 
unlike the rest of Detroit, did not take out bailout money from the federal government, did make use of the AVTM program. Both Ford and Nissan paid their loans back on time and didn't default. And Tesla? Well, as I'm sure you know, it took out a total of $465 million in funds from the AVTM program, and it paid back every single cent nine years ahead of schedule. But without that $465 million, Tesla might not have survived. And that's my point. Developing new and cutting edge technology isn't cheap. It's not always commercially viable to start with. And even if you have the best, the most astute business leaders in charge, a company may still not get out of the starting blocks and onto the market. This funding program is designed to dull some of the risks for startups and established companies alike. It's designed to help companies seek extra funding from private sources with the knowledge that the government is backing at least some of that financial risk. And while we don't know exactly how the money will be dispersed, i.e. if it's grants or loans or a mixture of the above, I think it's important to understand that without it, the US and more broadly, the EV industry around the world will not be able to meet the truly enormous goals that have to be met in order to actually make our planet livable again. And that's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the description. If you would like a more generalized news roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter vehicles, do remember to check out our news roundup show every weekend. And don't forget that we produce videos every single day on this network for you to enjoy, ranging from deep dives and features to tutorials, unboxings, and reviews. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. Give that bell a gentle ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go out to the folks on my right, for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters that's Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Jim Burness, Chris Ascenter and Denny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month supporters. Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you would like to be part of that amazing list, it's super easy. You can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button to support us on YouTube, or you can show us your support through Ko-fi or by buying something like this pride shirt from our cool swag store. There are links below. And if you're unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference. Oh, and as I said yesterday, if you are already a Patreon supporter, please double check to make sure your credit card hasn't expired because you've got over 250 Patreon supporters with expired cards that total up to more than $14,000 of lost annual revenue. And that basically means I haven't been paying myself since November. So thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.